All right, I stopped the other video. I didn't even grab my tea. I just, there's just something in my heart. Like we have only one chance in this life to go deeper with God than everybody who's gone before us. I mean, God's no respecter of persons. I've learned this early in my walk with God that he'll use anybody. He'll use anybody who just wants him. I mean, I've never been one who really cared about doing things for God, uh, like doing a ministry and, and people have these plans. I never cared about a platform. I never cared about any of these things. But he, I just wanted him and he would, he would, he would like just love literally the hell out of me. <laughs> I'd go to church meetings four times a day on Sundays, you know, and then seeking throughout the week off and on. And I, I was just really hungry for God. And then I'd be having all these heavenly experiences because I asked him. I would read the scriptures and I'd, I'd see these men in the Bible who would have experiences with God who's gone on before us. And I'd ask God, like, how come these people are having these kind of experiences and I'm just I, nothing? You know, I just went through the entire Bible and it was boring. I'll do it again. And I did do it again. And then the second time through it, I, it exploded. He opened up the scriptures to me because, and that taught me that the scriptures are to be read with the Holy Spirit who reveals the word of God. He's the teacher. We can create our own opinions of the word. We can create our own doctrines of men, but it's worthless in the end. The only thing that matters in this life is just how much of his life can come through you daily. How much can you abide in the anointing? How much can you abide in his presence? How much can you abide in the glory that changes you? Not only you, but as you're abiding in the glory, it changes other people from seeing Christ in you. Like we have the opportunity right now to go deeper into God than any, walk with him closer than Enoch. Who's up for that challenge? Who wants to sit closer then Moses in his tent, face to face with God for hours a day. Who's up for that challenge? Who wants to worship God so ferociously that it not only drives devils out of, you know, angry kings like David, you know, <laughs> but it'll drive devils out of your city. How far can we go with God? You know, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Many of us, I, I read it on Facebook and I'm shocked. Like people are, yeah, we don't need to hunger. This hungering thing is an idol. I think your own mind is an idol. <laughs> the scriptures are clear. I'd rather be filled from hungering and thirsting after him, even, even after righteousness. You know, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, it's written. For they shall be filled. Even after you've been made righteous, you've got to keep getting filled. You've got to keep being full of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that you are the light of the world. The city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Holy Spirit quoted that word for word to me. And he showed me what it is to be the light of the world. It's having him coming through the temple of the Holy Spirit, whether it's just you're standing in silence and people around you are getting touched, whether it's you open your mouth and people are getting touched, like Peter, the Holy Spirit fell on the people in the book of Acts, or whether it's like you're doing a worship video and people join in and they get touched by the Lord. It's time to outshine the past. It's time to shine brighter than the stars in the heavens, in the natural realm. Who can outshine the sun? The, not the Son of God. Nobody can do that. I'm talking about the natural sun. You know, on a heated day, the sun is so hot that we seek for shelter. We hide. <coughs> Some people hide under umbrellas. Some people go in their house. They won't come out. Other people lay on a beach and they just absorb it. All these things prophetically foreshadow the Son of God 
just pouring his SON rays through his body to blaze through the earth realm. It's like, it, it could be so hot on the earth from the natural sun, but what if a son of God steps up and it, it's, there's so much fire of the Holy Ghost coming off this person that the people on that side of the planet get blasted by God. More, and they forget about the natural sun. They just like, they just fall on the ground and just start absorbing that, just like those sun tanners. <laughs> what if you're one of those cave prophets that you've been in hiding? You're not letting the light shine. You're not letting the light of Jesus Christ shine through you because you're, you feel intimidated by Christian witchcraft. It's time to come out of the cave. You are the light of the world in a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. You cannot be hidden. It is written. You got to let the light of Christ shine. Don't bury your talents. What is a talent? It's something valuable that's been given to you from the master. Let it multiply into the lives of others. Whether it's giving a word of wisdom, whether it's giving, uh, singing a song in the spirit, whether it's releasing revelation, whether it's uh, just being smashed out of your face on, on the presence of Jesus Christ and you're just, you don't even know what you're doing. You just type, say hello to someone on Facebook. May Jesus Christ bless your face with his grace. You know, <laughs> erase the, the lemon juice off of your mouth. Who's going to come out of their caves and praise God in the open field? You know, Jesus Christ wasn't crucified in secret. He was placed in a cave by man, but <clears throat> even that cave couldn't hold him. He came out of the cave, didn't he? <laughs> so to speak, his grave. So many of us are just hiding in our caves, hiding from the opinions of men because someone said a negative word about us. Someone spoke death over us. And we forgot that the author and finisher of our faith is waiting for us to step out of the boat and walk on the water, walk on the washing water of his word that keeps us high above all the dead. But sometimes it takes that first step. Sometimes it takes that first post on Facebook. Sometimes it takes that knock on the door. Sometimes it takes that first video, making a video on YouTube. I didn't plan to do all this. God's the one who told me, make videos. <laughs> At first I just made a YouTube channel. I had no idea what I was doing. My first video, there was, it was so boring. I look back on it now and I just like, man, what am I even talking about? <laughs> but we grow from grace to grace and glory to glory. The thing that's on my heart is like, we need to step out of these caves of darkness with these shelters that we hide in, shelters of fear. You've heard about my dream. I speak about many times where I had to face a giant. And the only way to destroy this giant was through faith. Some of us need to step out in faith and just slay the giant that's blocking us from walking in our destiny. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter the name of it. If, it, if it's sickness, God is our healer. Just start thanking him every day for your healing. If it's, you feel beat up by the devil, you keep sinning, you keep falling into these uh, patterns of sin. You know what? The only way to mortify the deeds of the flesh or put to death the sinful nature is by the Holy Spirit. Spend more time with the Holy Spirit. Trade all these things for, for just time with him. And watch what you watch. And watch what you say. Let your words align with his words. Let your thoughts align with his thoughts. And then when something comes into your mind that tempts you to do something that's sinful, you cast it down. It's not going to always be there forever. Like you may think like, oh no, I'm under attack. I'll never be free from this. No, you cast it down. You might have to wrestle it for a few minutes. Maybe even an hour. I don't know. Sometimes it's instant. 
Sometimes it, it may be like just wrestling these principalities and powers of the air. Sometimes it's not even something that's coming through you, like a stronghold or a, it, it's things in the atmosphere and the people around you. You need to break them through. Paul and Silas, when they worshiped in the prison, they were, they were bound, yeah. But their praise and their worship, those are different kinds of words. Those are speaking words of power of who God is. And it shook the whole place and not only set them free, opened the prison doors of the people around them as well. The jailer even got saved. <laughs> it's time to let the light of the Holy Spirit shine. It's time to take the limits off of God and just throw them away. You know that measuring stick of how much of God you've ever experienced? Just take that, grab it with your hand, throw it as far away as you can. Because the heaven of heavens cannot contain God. If Jesus can levitate into heaven, <laughs> he's the way. <laughs> Why not us in him? Jacob's ladder, you know? Like, dang, you know, we don't have to levitate, we'll just take, climb the ladder. No, levitation belongs to the occult. Well, Jesus levitated in the book of Acts. Levitated up into heaven, right in front of his disciples. I'm sure someone thought, like, is that even allowed? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, everything the devil has is a counterfeit of that which is true. So learn to spend time with the true and you'll discern what the counterfeit is quite easily. Discerning of spirits comes through spending time with the Holy Spirit, who is the discerner, who reveals the mystery, who reveals everything. A lot of people call discerning of spirits like, it's like, I have discerning of spirits, but they only use their soul. They don't use their, <laughs> it's not spirit at all. It's like they just go by their emotions and, you know, but there is a difference. Oh, so today is the day I'm just going to take off those grave clothes. You know, Lazarus, come forth. You know, there's a work. <laughs> Get to work. <laughs> what is that work? I don't do any works. You know, it's like the Father has prepared works for you. Work out your salvation. And as salvation comes out through you, others will get saved. As they see him. But you got to take up those things that bind you. Just unravel all those grave clothes. Put on you by man. God didn't put those grave clothes on Lazarus. Jesus raised him up, but he was still bound. He had to get those things off. Sometimes you might need friends to unravel all those grave clothes. You know, listen to anointed teaching. Listen to the scriptures out loud. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen, if you follow someone with a gift of the Holy Spirit more than the Holy Spirit himself, you're running the risk of being a foolish virgin. But it doesn't mean that you stop listening to other people who are ahead of you. I do. I listen to all these other ministries. I listen to Brandon Barthrop. I listen to David Hogan, Todd Bentley. You know, some of old Jason Westerfield's old stuff before he turned into the, the, the New Age stuff. There are, there are still people who are way more mature than me in the spirit. But my plan is to outgrow everybody in the love of God. <laughs> Not just being nice. I mean a substance. That just floods through the room, it floods through my neighbors, it floods through my city, it floods through my country, and it floods through the world. That's the standard. Because the heaven of heavens cannot contain God. His spirit just goes past it all. It, it goes past time to the edge of even the beginning of time. He's still there and he, beyond all that. His spirit is just gushing. Life. Revelation. Peace, joy, just constant brooding of love, peace, joy, all the fruits of the Holy Spirit, life more abundantly. And I'm not competing with any other person. The scriptures say whoever does that is a fool. It's foolish to compare yourself with other people. Because they just may be walking in a teaching gift or a worship gift or some other kind of gift of the Holy Spirit. Whereas we can have the gift of God. If you knew who it was speaking to you and the gift of God, who is the Holy Spirit, you would have just asked of him and he would have given you living water. It's the gift of God himself. All we need to do is hear the voice of Jesus 
and ask him for that living bread. Ask him for the gift of God. He's not going to give us a stone or a snake or anything. He's going to give us the Holy Spirit. Many believers think they have the Holy Spirit, but it's just... <laughs> You'll know when you know. You'll know that you know. The first time I ever met God was through a pastor. I was kneeling down just a little boy and I was... I can't even remember. I rebelled against my mom and she told me not to go up there and I went up there anyway because like, I don't I wanted God. And then uh, I, I, this pastor was putting his hand on people. He was like, fire! Fire! And I, could, I started crying. I could feel like just this... this power that I've never felt before. I've had a simple little small visions and stuff like that as a kid growing up. But this was different. This is my first time that I ever heard God speak to me. And God said to me, it was the Holy Spirit. I recognize his voice now. And before I didn't know what it was, but I felt this, this spirit speak. And he said, God lives inside of that man. God said that God lives inside of that man. You know, it sounds funny, but it makes total sense to me the way I was. There's a scripture that says, and the Lord sent fire from heaven from the Lord. You know, in the book of Genesis when he sent down fire. And the Lord sent down fire from the Lord in heaven. Or something like that, you know. What do you mean the Lord sent down fire from the Lord? That scripture doesn't make any sense. But the Lord said that the Lord is living inside that man. <laughs> <laughs> and I believed him because that there was something in his voice that I've never experienced before. It was a, it was spiritual. I feel him now. His light, his words were life, peace. There was love attached to it. There was awe. There was a wonder. There it was spiritual stuff. It wasn't something I was making up in my own thought life. Because when he spoke, it was like it was like rivers of. Glory went through me. And then I watched, I looked at the pastor who God was talking about, the Holy Spirit was talking about. And he was, he closer he got to me, the stronger he got. And when he got to me, he put his hand on my head and said, Fire. And what was in him went into me. God entered me through the baptism of fire to purify my walk, to burn up the wood, the hay, and the stubble in that season. And it just, whoa, I lost it. It was like five times stronger than what I was feeling from a distance. You can feel the warmth of the sun if you go stand in a field on a sunny day. But compare that to standing 100 feet from the sun. There's a difference in level of power there. <laughs> And the sons of God on the earth. God has empowered them to let the, the warmth of the Son of God come through them to make it on earth as it is in heaven. But it's a whole other thing to just be in the atmosphere of that, to, to have that thing gushing through you. Different level of glory there. Say, well, no, no, we're all equal. We all have, no, no. The scriptures say that there's, that the heavenly bodies have different levels of glory. We all have a measure of Christ, but how much of that measure of Christ is coming through you and touching people around you? Come out of your caves, cavemen. <laughs> Come into the light of Jesus Christ. The stone has been rolled away. Step out in faith. Step out of the words that the accusers put on you. Step out of the fear of just like being criticized. If they hated me, they'll hate you. It's written. You're in the right. When they are persecuting you for righteousness, greater your rewards in heaven. For so did they to the prophets who were before you. What are the prophets? The ones who speak life. The ones who speak spirit. The ones who speak what the Lord is saying. So I may not be, I'm not called to be a prophet. I never said anything about that. Maybe you're called to be a prophet. Maybe you're called to be a teacher. Maybe you're called to be evangelist, teacher, prophet. Maybe you're just called to be so in love with Jesus that you show Jesus out in the open field so people can see what God is like through your life. Maybe you're called just to walk in holiness. And because you know, you know that without holiness, no one will see the Lord. But as you're walking in holiness, people will see the Lord. And they will be encouraged to walk in the Lord. Who knows? Maybe you're the next Paul. That God's just been waiting for you to step out. <laughs> Maybe you're the next John the Beloved. 
who Jesus has just been waiting for you to step out of that, you know, step out. Maybe you're the next Peter who Jesus is waiting for you to step out of the boat. Doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. It might be sloppy. Jesus might even rebuke you. Get behind me, Satan. For you're not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. But don't worry. You get renewed in the spirit of your mind. You'll be mindful of the things of your heavenly father. And then you'll only speak those things as you grow in grace. <laughs> I would encourage you, any limitation that has ever come upon your life, it has not come from God. There is no limitation that comes from God. These fruits of the Holy Spirit, there's no law against them. There's no limitation against love. There's no limitation against peace. There's no limitation against joy. There's no limitation against faith. The only limitation that comes against the fruit of the Holy Spirit is that which comes through darkness. Because the fruit of the Holy Spirit is walking in light. And there is no limitation to God. Geog geography <laughs> or whatever. You can, I can speak a word from, from here, from this videotape here in Canada, and it could go hit someone in Mexico, and they'd be just transfigured right there in the room because Jesus is the word. It's not me. I, in me, I have no power of myself. But if God has given me a true word for you to come out of your cave, you just may be the very next Paul that he's been waiting for. You just may be the son of God that the earth has been groaning for. You may be that daughter who prophesies and speaks life into the world so that it changes on earth as it is in heaven. That was decreed from ages past. You're the one that the world has been waiting for. You just had to step out of your cave. You have to step out of your complacency. You have to step out of your earthly comforts. You have to step out of the things that you find. Abraham had to leave that which was familiar to him to follow the voice of God. Remember that? Genesis chapter 12. Abraham left. He left his household gods. He left his natural, the natural things that he put value in. He had to leave it all to follow a voice that said to him, go to the place that I'll show you and I'll be with you. He followed the voice of God, not even knowing where he was going, just trusting God. And then he was called the father of faith. All these scriptures, scriptures written about him. Imagine the books. If you would step out in faith, that would be written about you, your life. We will read those books in heaven. But you can, the, the book will only be written if you step out of that which is familiar and walk <laughs> with God and follow His voice and His voice alone. Like I, I think I said in the video before this one, or I don't even know when I'm going to upload it, but I woke up this morning and a devil whispered into my ear saying, it came as my own thought. It's like, oh, grace is so boring. What a demon. So what I did, I spoke the opposite. I said, God, I thank you for great grace today because I'm going to need it. <laughs> and that's where I got this message from. We need to step out and be what God has called us to be. Wouldn't it be horrible if we arrived at heaven's gate? And he's like, oh, there was so much more for you. You were called to raise the dead. You were called to raise not just physical dead, but raise the people who are dead in their spirit. You were called to be like a David, to sing a new song, to, to, when, to deliver them from the, the, the hearts that were broken. You were, I put you on the earth to sing praise and build an atmosphere of glory so that people can be set free. Just like Paul and Silas in the prison, as they sang, prison doors flung wide open. But you were too satisfied in the natural realm. I gave you the keys of the kingdom, but you didn't use them to open the prison doors. I gave you revelation, but you buried it. 
I gave you so much, and you did so little with it. Wouldn't it be horrible if we arrived? And like, well, what about this guy? He didn't do very much with it. He had like, he had, he had nine talents and he only has one city. Those who compare themselves with others are fools. It is written, it's foolishness. The only one that you have the right to compare yourself to is Jesus Christ. And you will always fall short so that you can grow into, into the fullness of what God has called you to be like, to be like his son. 100% Jesus Christ formed in you. Paul said, I labor and groan and travail until Jesus Christ is formed in you. Fully formed in you. But to do that, we have to let a lot of the fallen things go, don't we? <laughs> Cavemen, come out of your caves in Jesus' name and shine as the light of the world that you're called to be.